Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, it's February 3rd, we're going to sell our produce. So, uh, we had three full days this time uh, for the produce, and we now have seven pallets of lettuce. The hydroponics were only giving me six pallets for three full days. So, this does show that these greenhouses are just a little bit more productive uh, than the hydroponics, which is very, very good news. Uh, all right, so we have seven lettuce per each uh, greenhouse, and then we have a full two-row stack of strawberries and maybe even a few more, and um, not quite a full two-row stack of tomatoes. So let's get this stuff sold, and that should give us enough money to, to pay off our bank loan and then still have a little bit left over, and then we'll go from there. So we're going to jump in our man truck. Man, oh, man, this is an awesome truck. And start loading this stuff up. I'm going to take it directly to market. We're not going to put this in the cold storage because this is still a good month to sell produce. It's not quite as good as January, but it's still very good. Uh, and uh, we need the money anyways right now. So that's what we're going to do. Let's hook this guy up. Hop out, hook the lines up, except for I'm stuck. Oh. Oh. The other thing, too, is I forgot to sell my eggs in January, so we now have actually double the eggs that we normally would have. So that's going to help quite a bit, too. So we'll get those those going. In fact, let's take a look at our prices right now and see who's offering how much for what. So we got eggs here and uh, shut up, timer. Okay, I got something in the oven. I'll be right back. All right, I am back. Let's see, price fluctuations. This is actually a terrible time for us to be selling eggs. Guess what? We have cold storage. We're going to we're going to save the eggs in cold storage and maybe consider selling them in May or even store them all the way up till October. Excuse me. So, all right, we don't got to worry about that. Uh, let's take a look at lettuce. Lettuce is definitely dropped down, but it's still not terrible and just because you know, we need the money now to pay off the bank. We're going to go ahead and sell them now. Um, yeah, and then tomatoes, same thing, and strawberries, pretty much same story. Okay, so who's going to give us the best price on lettuce? If lettuce is over a thousand bucks, it's still pretty good. So, Mama Joe's, man, Mama Joe's is just rocking it. Look at that. She still has the best price on lettuce for tomatoes. Five grocery mart. Grocery Mart has the best price. Yeah, okay. And then for strawberries, $260.75, the grocery has the best price on strawberries. Okay, so we're going to take the tomatoes and the strawberries to the grocery store. And then the lettuce to Mama Joe's Market right across the driveway. It's a beautiful thing, man. Absolutely beautiful thing. I wonder if I can pull in forward. Let's, um, let's say we want to curtain left... Uh, yeah, left front's good enough. Oh, no, left back. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So, yeah, let's load up all these maters and all of these strawberries. We're going to take them all to the grocery store. That's our our worker. Uh, did we already pay? Oh, look, there's even more. Nice. Wow. Okay. Yeah, strawberries. Strawberries are more about quantity than than price. Um, have we paid our worker for February? I don't think we have. Let's. Whoops. Let's take a look. I explained the whole worker business in this auto load thing in the last episode. And uh, if you haven't seen the last episode, you want to go watch it. It was a really, really cool episode. Probably one of the funnest episodes I've recorded so far in this series. Uh, nevertheless. That would have probably come out of miscellaneous. And uh, yeah, it doesn't look like we've paid our worker for February. Okay, so we are going to remove 1200 bucks. Oh, wait, do we have 1200 bucks? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, we do. Okay. If I ever forget to do this, feel free to remind me in the, the comments um, so that I, you know, I'll never deliberately forget to do it, but. You know, sometimes I forget stuff, right? Okay, so we've paid our worker for February. And basically, if, if you did not see the last episode, or for whatever reason didn't catch me talking about this in the last episode, the the deal is that I'm using this auto uh, pallet loader mod 
Um, but what I'm doing is I'm paying 1200 bucks a month. I'm basically paying $15 an hour for 20 hours a week uh, for a, an imaginary worker uh, that helps load this stuff up. Just because it just takes such a long time to do it manually. There's even more strawberries. Look at that. That's crazy. Okay, let's grab those too. Yeah, so it, do, it does actually look like these greenhouses produce just at a slightly higher rate than the hydroponics, which is fantastic, man. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, let's take this stuff to the grocery store. Let me check those again, just to make sure I didn't screw something up. Two seventy-five at Grocery Mart. Now that is definitely the best price for strawberries and for tomatoes. Five forty-five. Yep. Okay. Grocery store it is, and that's just right across the road too. So that's another good thing. We don't have to go too far. And then we'll come back and do the lettuce. We will definitely be able to pay off the bank loan, and we should still have a little bit of cash left over after that. But in March, we'll start up contracts and. Um, we're going to, you know, start bringing in the money again from doing that. I just have to figure out how I'm going to balance my time now between, you know, doing my own hay, which is the highest priority. Well, that and the produce, you know, those are the two high priorities because that's our own farm, right? And then also doing the contracts. Because we're going to be busier now than we have been up to this point. Okay. Let's get all of these strawberries and tomatoes sold and see how much money we make. Six thousand eight hundred and fifty-two bucks just on the strawberries and tomatoes alone. That's pretty darn good, you guys. You know, we could actually back this trailer in here now, because um, we're not, we don't have a dolly. So next time we come here, yeah, well, I'll back it in properly. Whoa, okay. We'll just pretend like that, and that never happened. <laughs> you guys didn't see anything. Nothing happened. Okay, let's go load up the lettuce, take it right across the driveway, and uh, make some more money at Mama Joe's Market. We'll check the price one more time uh, right before we sell, just to make sure it hasn't changed, because it can change. I love this truck and trailer, man. This is such a nice setup that we have now. All right, so we're going to be backing into these the first of these. So that means we're going to want to uh, curtain side. Okay, hold on. What? Right back, left back. I want left front. There we go. No, right front. Sorry, 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 sorry. My other right. My other left. Right front. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so these, this first uh, section is going to be real easy. Uh, the next one will, will be okay too, but... And the ones that are right in front of the barn are a little trickier, but I think I can do it. I just got to work on my skills. Let's go all the way back first and get the back set, and then we'll come and get the front set. I have to just not overcorrect on this truck. I'm still kind of getting used to the whole shebang here. All right, that's our worker loading up our lettuce. Our worker is very fast. Can't do it while the truck's moving. All right, good, good, good. Now, this next one shouldn't be too terribly... Oh, you know what? I got to get that other trailer out of the way. Yeah, we need to do that. Okay, this one shouldn't be too hard either. I just need to 
Not overcorrect too much. Not undercorrect too much either. By the way, just so you guys know, I did buy American Truck Simulator, or Trucking Simulator, or whatever it's called, because uh, it was on sale. And at some point, I'm going to probably try that out. And if I like it, I might even do a, a little series on it. We'll see. Imagine, you know, being as how that's a trucking simulator, we're going to have to get good at backing up trailers. I've, I don't know anything about the game. I've never even watched the game or, you know, anybody else played on YouTube. But from the description, you're supposed to be able to, you know, you start off as a, I guess, a contract trucker or whatever. Or maybe you work for a company. But you can, you can build your way up and eventually own your own trucking company and that kind of thing. So it's, it sounds kind of fun. So we'll see. All right, so that was that was pretty easy to get to. It'll probably easier for us to back into that one from this other side, but that's where we might need to get this, uh, you know, our flatbed trailer out of the way. But let's let's drive. Whoops, sorry, telehandler. Let's drive down here. Yeah, we need to get that out of the way. Okay, so let's let's hop into. Yeah, you're good. This trailer can no longer stay here. We have to find a new home for it. Oh, I guess it's this side. I'm thinking about getting rid of this vanilla, or, well, when I say vanilla, I mean base game barn. And replacing it with a modded version of the same barn, but one that has an actual functional silo. So it just bugs me that we have that big, giant silo there, and we can't actually use it. And, you know, we can accomplish that through some mods and things like that. So, yeah, I don't know where we'll park this trailer moving forward. Maybe we, well, see, the thing is, is I can't, well, actually, can I lock the thingy on this trailer? I guess I'm going slow because I didn't hook up the lines. There we go. Maybe what we could do is, yeah, see, it's not giving me the option to lock this trailer, though. Because I tried to do that one time before, and it, it wouldn't let me do it. All right. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to fight with it right now. So what we'll do is, guess we could park it here. Yeah, this is as good of a place as any, right? Yeah, that's the new home for this trailer. <laughs> At least for now. I know I got to get more sheds to store our stuff. It's coming. It's coming, guys. But uh, one thing at a time, right? We just only finished phase two of our farm expansion. We will eventually become the farm baron of Elm Creek. Eventually. Well, it's going to take a little bit of time to get there. Okay, let's get back in here. Okay, so we should be able to back this in. Don't overcorrect. So let's start turning here, but not too hard. A little harder. Okay, now start to straighten out. <laughs> okay. What? The camera's doing some weird stuff on me there. Okay, we still need it to go that way. Okay, now turn it. Okay, straighten this way. I never claim to be a professional backer truck upologist here, guys, but I'm getting better at it, he says as he completely gets stuck. What are we running into? Oh, we're hitting the hydrant. Okay. 
So back it up that way a little bit. There we go. Oh, okay, we cleared it. One of these times you'll see me do this like perfectly. That time is not this time. <laughs> yeah, see I'm cutting a little too sharp. Okay, straighten up a bit. Part of it is indeed getting just getting used to this truck and trailer combination because it's not exactly the same feel as, you know, the tractors and the trailers that we've backed up before. It's a little different. But it's not bad either. I just got to get used to it. Okay. That should be good. Let's load up this lettuce. Excuse me. Let's have our worker load up this lettuce. We're going to make some money, you guys. Check this out. Wow. This is like over three times more than what we normally sold each month in lettuce. And normally we've made around, we averaged around $9,000 per month, right? Uh, with the lettuce that we had. So... This is fantastic. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll pull out here. Get in the toolies for a second. And then we'll back up and get this lettuce. I really like this truck though. It's actually surprisingly easy to drive. Again, it's just a matter of getting used to it. I grabbed all of them. Look at all that lettuce, man. <laughs> That's from one month, you guys. Can you we're gonna completely pack that cold storage unit. I mean, it is going to be packed to the rim. And maybe then some. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay, fantastic. Okay, let's um let's pull into Mama Joe's where we're going to check the price one last time just to make sure. Look at all that lettuce. That's amazing. Okay, let's check our prices. Uh, Mama Joe's Farmer's Market is ten eighty seven. Yep, she still has the best price. All right, let's do this. How much money are we going to make? Uh, don't break Mama Joe's gutter. It's a brand new building. Look at our money just skyrocketing in the upper right-hand corner there. We've got to get this front section here. Okay, that little section was 27,000. 27,454. And then twenty nine eighty one. Thirty thousand four hundred and thirty five dollars. Guys, that is from one month of lettuce, and not even when the price is at the absolute best. We are gonna make some money this year. <laughs> yeah, baby. All right. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. Okay, so the plan moving forward now um, is each month we're going to load up the trailer, but then we're going to offload over by the cold storage, and we're going to put ev stuff everything in the cold storage. Uh, and we're going to do that with the eggs right now. In fact, I don't even really need to use the, the truck for that. We'll just get the telehandler out and stuff the eggs in there. Can you imagine, though, how much money we're going to make when we sell that much product you know, when the price is at the highest all at once. Oh, man. It's probably going to surpass what we're going to make off the silage, I'll bet you. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. 
we shall see how that all comes together but i'm excited this is great very happy with how things are going on our farm so far hope you guys are too hope you guys are enjoying the series at some point i'm probably going to have to um change the name of the series from greenhorn because you know i'm not really a greenhorn anymore i'm not a pro necessarily but definitely not a greenhorn we could say maybe we've graduated to novice or intermediate farmer <laughs> so oh yeah this is fun though i'm so enjoying myself okay let's park the man back over here it should be plenty enough out of the way to we don't have to worry about the you know, the telehandler going into the cold storage. Fantastic. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab these eggs here and put them in cold storage because this is a terrible time right now to be selling eggs. Almost the worst time, actually. And we'll use the, uh, the bag handler attachment that we have here. Don't know how many of these we can grab all at the same time. They do kind of need to be, I think they need to be right next to each other, but maybe not. Let's see. Oh, we got to get down a little bit lower. Only got one? Okay, hold on. Let's back up. Yeah, okay, so I guess let's do this then. Let's just get right over the top of this one. Okay. All right, now, if we... What would happen if we tried this? No, nope, just wants to grab that one. This is really not the proper way to handle eggs. Just going to throw that out there. Hey, we got all of them, though. Look at that. <laughs> all right. Awesome. They seem a little bit, uh, whoa, a little janky there, but you can't really blame them. almost 5,000 liters worth of eggs. Okay, open that door. Now, um, when I was kind of messing with this earlier, we do have to kind of make sure that is low enough to get under the door, which it is. Okay. Now, what we might need to do here is we might need to... Just park the telehandler here for now.
Uh, we might want to use the f the actual forklift forklift. Whoops. Just to kind of tidy up the pallets inside there. And, you know, if if things get really messed up, I'm, I'm not opposed to using super strength to kind of tighten stuff up too, you know, like I've done with the bales. I try and use the actual, you know, machines for stuff like this and not just go full on super strength, but, you know, I let myself use it a little bit if I need to, you know, just like I said, tidy stuff up a bit. Okay, so what we need to do here... Oh, okay, that was weird. Let's try that again. Trying to get underneath here. Okay, let's get all the way in to there. There we go, okay. In fact, I'll probably just keep this, this forklift parked over here uh, from now on. Oh, you know what we really need to do now that I think about this some more? We need to keep the partial pellets out there. I don't know if it'll still fill this one up since we've moved it. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so yeah, moving forward, I'm not gonna put partial pallets in here, only full pallets. So if I put this back here, I don't know if the game will still fill it up or or not. I my guess is it probably won't, but we'll we'll just put it back in the loading area anyways and see what it does. So these are actually not in too bad a position. We do want to push them all the way up against the wall and then move the top pallet over to one side. Yep. Okay, so let's bring this down. And then what we'll do is we'll just kind of gently shove the, well, okay. That one got, went a little crooked on us. Okay, this is where we're going to fudge just a little bit, use super strength to keep stuff straight. Because, you know, we want all of these pallets that we put in here to be nice and neat. Because there's going to... I I will not be surprised, you guys, if we completely fill up this cold storage before. Uh, and then some, probably, even. And if that happens, we might need to consider buying a second one. At, you know, at some point in the near future. Alright, why is that... Must be up against the wall or something. There we go. Then we'll just kind of nudge that forward. That's not really unrealistic to make a small adjustment like that, even in real life. It's one thing, you know, to try and pick the whole entire pallet up, but another thing to just kind of shift it a little bit when it's already in place. All right, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're, we're going to park the forklift in here. This is the new home for our forklift. So the idea is the telehandler is used for, you know, a bulk transport of mini pallets and the little forklift is used for fine tuning, I suppose, we'll say. Fantastic. All right, we're sitting at $65,513. First thing we're going to do is go into our finance menu and we are going to repay the bank all the way off. There we go. We are now out of debt and we still have $35,000 to boot. Yay us. Let's take a look at our greenhouses. Um, so two months have gone by and um, it looks like the seeds are going down more quickly than the fertilizer, which is actually not a bad thing because the fertilizer is the most expensive thing. But eventually once we get cattle, 
um, you know, then we're going to have manure and we don't even have to buy solid fertilizer any longer. Okay. But we were still doing good. It's still going to be a few more months before we have to even worry about water, let alone, you know, fertilizer and, and seeds and, and whatnot. Excellent. All right, you guys. Well, uh, I think we're done. Uh, we are definitely done. Here's what was in the sales, in, in case you're curious. There is kind of a nice um, planter in here, but it's just not something we need right now. You know, but uh, I am watching this, though. And then there's also a medium at Massey Ferguson tractor, 7710, which is pretty nice. But again, not really something we need. So we'll just keep, you know, watching the sales. Uh, things that we need are the Pottinger mower that windrows, the square bale autoload trailer, and the square bale uh, wrapper for, for silage. Uh, we are still going to do square bales, but I'm planning on doing square bales for my own use for my when I get my cows and going back to round bales for selling uh, and I've mentioned that a couple times now uh, oh this is a little jank over here I might have to I have to do a little bit of work on that there was one other thing I wanted to fix too uh, mama Joe bought herself a little utility shed for the corner over here and when I placed it I put it a little too far over and it, you know, kind of messed up the landscaping here. Mm. Actually, that doesn't look that bad. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to leave it the way it is. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, actually, there is one more thing I wanted to do before we wrap up the episode. I want to move these bales over to our new storage sheds. So let's, um... We need to get the baler out of the way and we need to get the bale loader attachment uh, either out of the way or we could actually I'm trying to think if I want to use that or if I want to use the this guy and then we might be able to park the tell handler um, in the in that spot so it has its own home okay so let's let's do this let's bring the bale loader attachment over here and we'll put it in front of the snow plow for now all right why is that not unattaching there we go Okay, if we're going to use the square bale loader, we're going to need these, uh, this adapter here. Because that's actually a front loader tool. Hmm, why isn't that hooking up there? Do I have it the wrong direction? Had it uh, turned the wrong direction. Okay. All right. I want to hook the lines up. Um. Oh, looks like they're already hooked up. Yep, okay, cool. Hmm, I wonder if this can handle five bales at a time. I guess we're going to find out. Well, let's take these three bales over first. I tried to fit one of my weights to the back end of this and I couldn't get it. It wouldn't fit, which is really odd. Um, but 
I guess it needs a three-point hitch. I wonder if there's a, a three-point hitch adapter for the back of the telehandler. There is one for the front, so you can use it to tow trailers, but I didn't see one for the back, so I'm not really sure. Okay. What happened to the third bale? It only shows two, but it shows 27,000 liters, which is true. That's correct, because each one of these bales is 9,000 liters. So I guess it's just not, you know, kind of like before, the bales that you see in there are not a direct one-to-one -one representation of what's in there. Okay, that's fine. As long as, as long as we know how it works, that's the main thing. Now, let's see if we can grab five bales at a time. And keep in mind, too, this is straw. Straw is lighter than hay. I wonder, <laughs> I wonder how it's going to do with the hay. We'll, we'll find out. Can I connect to the back of this baler and pull it out? I think I should be able to. Let's just see what it does. We can't hook up a PTO. Uh, no. Am I too far back? Nope, not gonna let us do it. Okay, we'll have to grab the tractor to pull that out. Okay, yeah, it can handle five bales. Um, the top bale's not actually secured, though, so whether or not that's going to stay on for the trip over there remains to be seen. We won't go, like, you know, balls out crazy, but we'll just see. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's staying on so f Oh, well, there we go. Okay, it's not on now. Four bales at a time. See, I wonder if the, ba the bag handler can grab more. The thing is, is, I'm a little concerned about the weight, though, because I can definitely tell, you know, that five bales on this is, it can handle it, but it's not super, super stable either, so. You know what we might be able to do here is this. Oh, yeah, that makes it a little easier. Cool. Man, I love these new storage units, you guys. Hmm, okay. Now that I'm starting to see the bales in there, though, they don't... It doesn't look as... as big as it did at first. <laughs> well, here, let me just put it this way. If we, uh... If we fill it up to capacity and have more left over, it's just a nice problem to have, right? Uh, what happened to that other bale? Oh, it's over here. So yeah, it looks like four at a time is what we're going to have to be able to, to uh, stably take over. So let's do this. Let's just pop you down here. We'll use the telescoping thing because we can. These bales are a little, uh, crooked. 
All right, let's back up here and then do this. Oh, that is awesome. I love it. Oh, boy. Okay. Pull it back. Oh, man. We, we lost the bottom one. Crazy. Okay. Can we spear it again? It got caught up in the beam there. Hmm. Is our other tine hitting the beam? No, it's just... All right, well, whatever. Let's just take these three over. Well, either that or... Maybe we can pick this other one up since it's straight and laying down flat. Well, it's not purdy, but it's working. Do you ever feel you don't get out what you're putting in? All your hopes and efforts are all in.
All right, guys, that finally moves all the hay over here. Man, that took a lot longer than <laughs> I was anticipating it to. Uh, but we have uh, 388,069 liters of straw in this barn, and we have 168,629 liters of hay into this barn. I thought about bringing that grass bale over here and just manually putting it in here, but I don't know if that will mess up the script on these, so we're just going to leave the grass bale over in the in the shed for now and then of course you know this will be for round bales when the time comes yeah so i started as you saw in the montage there um i started just bringing everything over with the telehandler but it was taking a long time so i figured all right well let's get the trailer out and load the trailer up to bring them over here which turned out to be a better idea uh but anyway we got everything moved uh, so we got our hay and our straw put in their new sheds which is nice feeling uh that also freed up that spot in our uh, shed there for us to park our telehandler so that's now going to be the new uh, place for the telehandler uh, to live when we're not using it of course and let's just put this trailer right back up here in this little patch of grass this is kind of where it's going to live for the for the time being anyways until and unless we come up with a better plan and then we'll put the baler back in its usual spot as well. But uh, I think that is it, guys, for this episode. So we are going to uh, go into March. And I will bring you back on March the 3rd. Well, actually, I might bring you back before then, de uh, depending upon what the contracts are. So, you know, we're still not at the, the point yet where... We're, we're not going to do contracts anymore. Uh, we are going to keep doing them. But, you know, maybe not quite to the extent that we were before. But as I've already mentioned to you, as time as time does go on and, and our farm becomes more, you know, larger and more involved, well, there will be definitely less time for us to work on uh, on, on quests. Or not, not quests. I keep calling quests. Missions or contracts. Yeah, that's what they're called. <laughs> contract so uh, but I, I foresee myself at least continuing to do you know the fertilizer and the hay contracts and any big harvest contracts that come up you know for for a, some time to come yet because it's just too you know too good of money to pass up plus the fact with the hay in particular uh, you know we get the extra bonus bales at the end of it and it's just so worth doing as as will a large you know harvesting contract that gives us grain uh not so much the sugar beets that that was not really i mean i said we got those beets for free we did but i think i made less than six thousand dollars off of the entire uh harvest and it took many hours to do because you know sugar beets just take a long time to do so i don't think i'll be doing sugar beet harvest any longer until we get to the point where we buy the sugar mill and then start growing them for ourselves and that's a whole different story of course so you know hay contracts we'll keep doing big harvest contracts will you know green harvest contracts i should say we'll keep doing and fertilizer cultivating maybe i don't know i mean we still have the big cultivator and i don't make a ton of money off of those only because i don't usually do them myself i i put a worker on them so i have to pay the worker to do it but i don't know we'll see I might still do them, or maybe I'll just start doing the big ones. We'll just kind of see how things go. But the thing is, is I, you know, we're, we're going to have a lot more work to do now with the with these greenhouses, and especially if I start, if I decide to start moving the product every day rather than every month, which might not be a bad idea, just because if we let it pile up, <laughs> it's going to be a lot of stuff you know, to have to move in here. So I'll figure that out and figure, you know, get into a good rhythm and go from there. Nevertheless, um. I, I may not bring it back until March 3rd unless we, you know, depend, depends upon the contracts that we get. And if I have a compelling reason to bring it back before then, um, well, we have to do our hay too. Yeah, okay, well, I'll, I'll bring it back in March sometime. All right, you guys, we're going to let you go here. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.